Our next guest today is Sheikh Muhammad Hassan R. Umri. He has attempted various competitive exams, UPSC, CSC, KPSC, and many more. He has also attempted, uh, he is the director of value education, Hasnat College, Henno. He is also a motivational speaker and personality development trainer and have trained more than 2,500 students from various schools, colleges, and educational institutes of South India. So, kindly enlighten us with your thoughts and wisdom. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa la aqibatu lil muttaqeen Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidil anbiya'i wal mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Wa ala man tabi'ahum bihsanin ila yawmiddin Amma ba'd A'udhu billahi s-sami'il alim Min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Min hamzihi wa nafqihi wa nafthihi Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Rabbish rahli sudri wa yassilli amri وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا وزدنا علما أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات dignitaries in the front row highly qualified teachers the dedicated staff and uh, nonetheless, definitely the alumni and the present students of Al-Bashir International School. I, I just uh, don't have to take a lot of time of yours. I'm asked to s share something with you and speak for a while. And the topic I have selected to discuss with you all today is expectations, life between expectations and realities. Since we are, uh, there are a few who are still in their academics, there are few who have completed their academics, and there are also few who are in the urge, who are in the verge of uh, seeing and exploring the world, the real world today. And if I say, I think uh, no one of you will disagree with me, the student life, the student and the professional life, is always a tug of war between the expectations and realities. Expectations is what we were working for. Reality is what we will encounter tomorrow. Expectations were like uh, the wishes we had made and the realities are something which welcomes us in the future. Expectations are those uncertainties which we weren't aware about, but the realities are the certain this predestined thing which is waiting for us in the future. Definitely, when I'm speaking between these expectations and realities, let me throw out a few very important basic points with you all, which I believe with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely uh, prove, to be the, uh, prove to be very guiding to you and prove to be like a way showing to you inshallah in your future. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, see, uh, the very first thing which we need to understand when we talk about realities and expectations, please believe that when you have some expectations in your life, when you have certain expectations in your life, please uh, place all your expectations in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Place all your expectations after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the placing your trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, because وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Quran rightly says and explains us, whatever you expect has not to come, has not to be come true, except Allah wills, except the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have certain expectations in your life, when you have certain aspirations and ambitions in your life, please see to it that your expectations comes after the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Quran wants, Quran gives us this guidance in a very straightforward and a very clean terms. That is, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ That when you have made your decisions, this is the life where we make decisions. This is the life where we plan our decisions. This is the life where we work for our decisions and this is where I want to bring this all, bring this word to your notice 
that is faida azamta faida azamta fa tawakkal ala allah once you have made your decisions place your trust in allah and you must all know that what is the reward of trusting upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if i ask this as a question to the audience here one and all present that what is the reward of pl pl placing the trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can i expect some answers from all of you here so that we have that involvement in the discussion as well what is the reward let me repeat the question what is the reward exactly of placing the trust upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relying on allah alone what's the reward for that any answer please you may be right or wrong please or take your participation yeah please jazakallah khair brother wa alaikum assalam Ahsan, Jazakallah. Uh, can you please praise him up? Allahu Akbar, MashaAllah. Yeah. If if I put it uh, in my in in some other ways or in the terms of Quran, if I put the same in the terms of Quran, his his uh, what it is he has said, wa may yatawakkal ala Allahi fahuwa hasbu. This is what we have in the Quran as in guidance. If you place your trust in Allah, you will find Allah to suffice you alone. in this world and hereafter why i need to say this is because when we plan and when we have certain expectations in life and when we see tomorrow we are not meeting up those expectations we will end up disappointed in life and to save ourselves from this disappointment and this disappointment uh, eventually uh, causes the consequences which will land us in depression kind of things in our student life as well as in our professional life to save ourselves from all this kind of disturbances let us be very focused on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and await his rewards here and hereafter and the point number 2 very important when we speak about expectations and realities please understand one fact in life only there there's just one difference between a person and a personality between a common person and a personality you know the person is always expecting something from from something from this world and the personality is one who is thinking what to give what to be given to this world as you know molana abul kalam azad his words always motivates me fascinates me when i just listen to him when listen his speech or uh, when i uh, read about him and when i read his quotations you know he he tells the personality in this world is the one who sees the world and thinks what to be given to them not the one who sees the world and think what can i expect from them what can i always have because you know, when allah rabbul alamin has given a certain position and allah taala has given a certain knowledge now it's our responsibility to think what to be given to the society thereafter because quran again gives us the command on the same wa ahsin kama ahsan allah ilaik do good as allah has done good to you this is the time we rather than expecting the uncertainties from this world we rather than expecting the positions we rather expecting the respect we rather expecting uh, the acceptance from this world let us stay very steadfast let us stay let us be very steadfast in a way that we are not here to take from others we are not here to expect from this world which is uncertain in nature we are here to give we are here to share we are here to benefit don't you know the hadith the saying of rasulullah the very the closest amongst you to allah is the one who is beneficial to the society this is the time dear brothers and sisters you are prepared you are ready for the uh, you are ready for the field now you are ready for the realities now you are ready to embrace the realities where you will be coming across the needs of the society where the society needs you and you know if you just start thinking about the needs you don't have to run behind the opportunities the opportunities will come rushing to you and welcoming you the heights of success inshallah and when i uh, also when i say say about don't expect from others do what you have to do for others you know because when there comes a label of uh, a graduation 
when I'm called, um, when I see myself as a doctor, as a lawyer, as an IAS officer, whatever it is, when we see ourselves in certain positions, we, our heart from the inner core uh, expects some kind of respect from others, some kind of acceptance, some kind of love. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has answered all these symptoms of human mind. All these uh, expectations of human mind, Rasulullah, there was a Sahabi, the companion came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my beloved, my dear Prophet, just give me one nasiha today. Just give me one thought today, which if I work upon it, Allah loves me and the people loves me. I, I appeal all your attention on this word of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The companion asked, Rasulullah, mujhe bataiye ki main aisa kya karu jis pe mujhe Allah ki bhi mahabbat asil ho aur dunya ki bhi mahabbat logon ki Rasulullah told izhad min ad-dunya yuhibbuka Allah wa zhad fi ma inda an-nas yuhibbuka an-nas separate yourself from this world don't have the extraordinary affection from this world and Allah will love you don't have extraordinary expectations from this world and Allah will love you and separate yourself from what from what other has from what others possess in this world from the positions of others and from the expectations of others and definitely the people will love you they will give you the space they will give you the stage they will give you the place not just in their uh, in the physical asset but also in their heart and in their mind and they'll def definitely come to listen to you and dear brothers and sisters the third and very important point i have to speak in front of you all when there is a war between expectations and realities please select the realities in your life you will never be disappointed as we as there is a very common saying in the quote keep your eyes on the stars but feet on the ground because this is where the reality lies this is where you have to face and this is where you have to embrace and why i have to say this is the verse i recited in the beginning of my talk this is a promise made by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who believe that allah will elevate the status in degrees of those who believe in allah and are given knowledge subhanallah and uh, uh, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we fulfill both the criteria here first of all uh, being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are amongst the believers at the same time Allah has also given us some knowledge and this knowledge there is in if you recite the Quran from Alif Lam Mim Til Nas only one place in the Quran where elevation has been stated the word elevation has been stated and that is di directly next to knowledge but if you have to make yourself eligible for this elevation here and hereafter, if you want yourself to, uh, if you want to see yourself uh, reaching the heights of success here and hereafter, you need to stay steadfast with the realities of this world because knowledge does not come uh, without its. Uh, 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 without its byproduct, the byproduct of the knowledge sometimes is also arrogance, where we start thinking that we are someone else, we are special to the society, we are special to the common citizens, we are special to the common people. No, here we are to give to the world, and this is why again Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told that man lillahi rafahullah, make yourself humble after taking knowledge. Make yourself humble after being benefited from knowledge. The more you are humble here, the more you will be elevated here and hereafter. This, is the, this was the greatest difference between the Adam and the Shaitan at one time. Adam alayhi salam status was elevated in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he accepted because he accepted his inferiority in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he accepted his reality in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But shaitan wanted to argue on his expectations. That I want this. I can't do this. I'm not able to do this. I'm not made to do this. And he had to get uh, out, kicked out of the jannah. And he had to, to be termed as mardud here and hereafter. So for ourselves to be elevated here and hereafter we need to keep our feet on the reality and the last but not least what i have to share with you all is the very great and definitely will all agree with me if i say the very certain reality of this world is that this is going to finish someday this is going to end your terms 
your positions, your posts, your degrees, your knowledge, everything has to come to an end at one particular day. The, the only certain thing in this world, in this universe is death. And the only uncertain thing in our life is the life itself. So please always keep in your mind that there is a day where we are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is an end for the beginning of this universe and every end has a new beginning that is the hereafter. Why I have to say this is because in the, in the, in the life of expectations and realities only two things will happen. There are only two ends. Either you will meet your expectations or you will lose them. Either you will achieve or you will lose. Either you will gain or you will definitely lose. Or you will get succeeded or you will have to face failure. And in this both the circumstances there are two consequences related with the e either of the circumstances. If you succeed, there are high chances of yourself to be very overwhelmed with yourself, very happy with your own self, thinking that I have done everything in this world. And this is where the ignition of arrogance comes in our heart, that even I have achieved something, even I am of something here, even I am able to do something. If this sort of thinking comes in your mind after your achievements, please remind to yourself, this is not your own achievement exactly. This is not your own achievement. This was the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you because this thought will make you humble. This thought will make you realize your potential. This, this thought will keep you steadfast and this thought will also keep you way focused and way guided. This is why, subhanallah, uh, you know, uh, the way, because once we start questioning to ourselves and the society, who is there more best than me? Who can achieve than me? I achieved and he or she lose because there was also people who were more greater than us in the strength. Allah Rabbul Alameen reminds us about the Qawm Aad. They used to tell Man Ashaddu Minna Quwa. Who is there who is more than us in the strength? You know what Allah replied? Awalam yaraw anna Allah alladhi khalaqahum huwa ashaddu minhum quwa. Don't have they seen that Allah who created them was more than them in the strength because the keys of the treasures of the uh, skies and the earth lie rest in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever you meet your expectations, remind to yourself, this is what is being given to you. You know, in, the, in, in dunya and akhirah, the very best reward for us and the very best achievement for us and the success for us is actually attaining Jannah, entering Jannah. And Allah Rabbul Alameen has quoted a verse, a quoted a saying of the people of Jannah when they enter the paradise, when they enter the Jannah, what they will have to say at the end of the day is just Alhamdulillah illadhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah All praise belongs to Allah who guided us for this Jannah. If Allah would not have guided us, we would have not achieved the Jannah itself. So always remind yourself, this is the mercy of Allah that you have met your expectations. And unfortunately, if you fail to achieve what you had desired for, if you fail to achieve what you had expected for, and if you just fail to achieve what you were dreaming and aspiring for, tell to yourself, okay, this is okay. May I, I will have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what Allah has planned for me because Quran again rightly speaks in front of us and gives us a very clear guidance for both the ends. You don't get arrogant for what Allah has given to you and you don't fall in despair. You don't lose hope if you lose something in this world because you have the greater rewards hereafter and Allah would have planned something better for you even in this world but what you will have to do all about is just wait for it and prepare yourself for your destination as it is very uh, beautifully explained in urdu in the uh, in the proverb of the urdu manzil ki justaju kyun kar raha hai rahi manzil ki justaju kyun kar raha hai rahi itna azim ban ja ke manzil tujhe pukare don't just get lose your hope if you lose one opportunity fine in this world allah has planned something more better for you without losing hope keeping the hope on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i'll conclude my speech my talk with the with the very uh, least word the hope you know what's the significance of uh, hope on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world is hope upon allah in arabic we term it as husn zan allah pe husn zan rakhna Allah se achhi ummeedein rakhna. You know the reward 
it can make the impossible possible it can make it happen though you don't see any physical source in front of you but still it will lead you to the positions it will leave you to the destinations which you would have not even think about it because we know the musa ali salam when the firaun and the people of firaun were following him they were two ends if they turn back there were firaun and the people of firaun who would have vanished them and when they were looking forward there was the water itself and they didn't had any way to go and quran reminds us about the musa and his hope on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is uh, um, allah uh, that you know he he reminds of, about himself that allah indeed allah is with me and he will show me the way indeed allah is with me and definitely allah will show me the way uh, and these words gives us the hope that you know as soon as Al uh, Musa alayhi salam recited this word and he placed his hope on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah had to separate the seas and provide him the way out this is what it is if you want one more practical example from the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which can make it very clear to you the strong and the strength full hope you have in Allah and Allah will definitely make ways for you what you have desired and dreamed for because there was a time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa just took a nap and then uh, got uh, uh, after that nap and he gave a an, uh, divine announcement. And the divine announcement was, I just, uh, it was just revealed to me that there are 70,000 people from my ummah who are going to enter Jannah without being questioned on the day of judgment. There were companions sitting in the same way. There were companions surrounding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first amongst those, suddenly there, there appeared a noise, there appeared a voice telling that, O oh Rasulullah, pray to Allah that I be amongst them. Before having this aim, before dreaming for Jannah, before expecting Jannah from Allah, he didn't even think about himself whether I am fit to enter it or not because his trust, his reliance was upon the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah gave him the divine announcement that yes Ukkasha you are from them and then the other came out for the same thing then Rasulullah told Sabaqa kabiha Ukkasha and Ukkasha has taken away from you he has gone way further from you this is the hope if you have the expectations regarding your limited strengths capabilities you will end up disappointed if you place the hope in the endless and everlasting strength and abilities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will always be way guided you will always be happy you will always have the peace of mind and end of the day you will have that satisfaction that Allah has given me what I deserve for by these words I like to conclude before I conclude I thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me uh, for uh, this uh, op uh, for giving me uh, this opportunity to uh, share a few words in front of you all and I thank the entire management the team of Al Bashir International School for uh, allowing me some time to share my thoughts with the uh, audience present here and in the end the for the present students of Al Bashir International School and for the complete the, the alumni who are sitting here I wish you all a very remarkable, memorable, and successful journey here further. Thank you for your attention and patience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.